Hi, I'm author Camille DeMaio, and I am continuing my new series where I interview people from all over the book world. I had I got to be the happy recipient during the May launch of my fifth book of uh, being interviewed by a lot of wonderful people, but I want to make sure that everyone knows that uh, books are not just about the author. They are about the editor, the publicist, the, um, the agent, and primarily about the reader. I mean, we're all readers first. Uh, I, I certainly consider myself a reader first. So I want to in uh, I want to interview a lot of readers who have taken their love of books to the next level by putting it on some great social media platforms, blogging, Facebook, Instagram, and one of my own personal happy places is Instagram. One of the people who makes it incredibly special is Bex Gorsuch. If I am I saying that right, Bex? It's Google. I'm married, but that was correct. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. That's our, uh, all right. Bex is out of the Bex on Instagram, and she has, as of today, about forty-one thousand followers, which is uh, wonderful and enviable. But she, it's hard won, and it has been through um, really some studying of the medium and then using it in a wonderful, authentic way. So we'll get into that. But Bex, if you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself, we'll go from there. Sure, um, I'm Bex. I am the blogger behind Out of the Bex, and I review and just photograph and talk about and have a lot of fun with books of almost every genre for readers that just love to read and aren't so discerning about uh, the genre itself, but just love the act of reading a book. And I'm also uh, the founder of Author Influence, which is a DIY marketing solution uh, learning website for authors and writers who want to. Uh, take advantage of the modern marketplace to their best advantage. And Author Influence is where we initially met. Uh, you were just starting it up and you needed some authors to try out your class on. And so you reached out to my publicist, Anne-Marie, and asked her if she had anybody who'd be interested in doing that. And Anne-Marie knows that I pegged Instagram quite a while ago as being a, a platform that I really wanted to excel on and that I'm, I'm very happy on. And so she recommended me for it. And it really revolutionized how I do Instagram. I'm still not doing it as well as you are, but I have upped my game tremendously because of having taken your class. So I'm going to be sure that we put out some shout outs there for it. But in your class, you taught a lot of things that really play out on your page, which is beautiful photography. I'm beautiful just you want to sit there and just cozy up when you see her pictures but it's also engagement you respond to every comment uh, you know how to use hashtags well instagram stories polls you look at all the different tools and you use them and then you teach them so tell us a little more about that sure um well i think it is uh, difficult for an artist's mind to sometimes look at the business side of things, but in the modern world, you have to be a creator uh, and a business person. And I think that's where a lot of people struggle and where I think I'm a little bit unique because I've always been that way where I'm very creative, but I'm also a bit scientifically by the numbers minded. So I'm able to sort of blend those two together. And what I believe is that marketing and advertising and just promotion it's a completely learnable skill that anyone can master. It's just a matter of learning the tools and understanding the reasonings why. And that's what I try to give people is um, to give creatives, authors specifically, uh, a window to that world so that you can be a writer and be creative, but be successful in it. Because it's more than just writing it. It's about making it sell. Like that's, you know, there's two pillars of being an author. It's writing it and it's selling it. So it I try to help with and when we all get started as writers, we're really focused on the writing part. That's the dream. You want to write a book. And no, I, I think no matter what your, um, your publisher promises you, in the end, you as an author have to be, you have to look after yourself. You have to be your own promoter, but you don't want to always be, uh, you want to do it in a really authentic way. At least for me, it's important to you know, tell you about what I'm doing, but do it authentically. And so I learned a lot of ways how to do that and how to engage on your page. So I know that at authorinfluence.com, you do have a free class that people can get started on that is full of lots of great tips. But why would you tell people just straight out, whether it's authors or whether it's readers who just want to improve their page, what are three tips that they should be looking at on Instagram? The biggest tip I like to give overall is consistency, which is a tip that you'll see all the time if you like Google at all anything about like tips with social media, consistency is gonna come up, but no one explains 
what that means. They just say it as a blanket term. So allow me to explain it right now. <laughs> Consistency <laughs> for me is sort of like <laughs> a three tier system in a way. It, it's in every facet, it's about being consistent. So that means what you post, how you post and when you post at its most basic. So what you post is like choosing your topic and being really consistent about that. So for you and I, it's books. Um, and you can drill down into that as much as you want. It might be just historical romance for people or just nonfiction for others, or just like for me, it's just books. Um, and I don't talk about anything else really. It's book centered, book focused. And then how you post it in your style, uh, which can not only be a visual thing, which I certainly think is important, especially in the modern world, but also a tone, your writing voice, um, how you present yourself in your style, and also when you post. So not just posting um, for a week straight and then giving up and being like, well, <laughs> I tried that. And then you come back and expect people way. to be with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's about consistency in all the facets of, of your platform and what you're trying to do. So that's really the biggest tip I could give anyone is to learn to be consistent and to learn systems um, that allow you to do that easily and without str struggling and stressing out. That's something I try to, to teach. Of course. And you told me previously, and it's something that I do myself, is sometimes you'll take lots of pictures in one day so that you don't have to think every day about what you're going to create. I do the, I, I don't off, always do it, but I, I do it often enough where I just happen to have some good props or I have some fresh flowers that I, I've been putting more flowers and coffee in my bookstagram posts. So when those flowers are fresh or that coffee is made, I'm going to pull books off my shelf that I know I'll be reading in the next few weeks and, and I'll play with that. Um, another one of my tips that I've just recently been doing is I went to Michael's and bought a lot of scrapbook paper and yeah. uh, because they're square, they're so very nice for Instagram and it gives me some pretty backgrounds. Uh, so that's how I've gone with it. But what I love about about your page and I try to not even attempt it because you do it so well your page makes somebody feel like they are sitting in bed in their rumpled white sheets and they're having a donut and coffee and reading a great book so the kind of things I feel when I go on your page I feel comfortable I feel cozy and that's what I love to evoke when I read is I love those words so um, what do you what are some things you do to evoke feeling consistently in your page um, I think it's such an individual creative decision, um, how you, like that's something I talk about in at Author Influence and the Instagram course is how to create your theme and how it makes sense for your brand, your type of books. Um, for me, uh, just being a book blogger and talking about a bunch of different books, the one thing that every read has in common for me is that it is um, a comfort zone. It's cozy. It's my time often for myself. To reflect, to think, and some reads can challenge me, some reads can be difficult, some can be emotional, some can be happy and relaxed, but at the end of the day, they're all um, centered around that one experience, which is cozy comfort for me, and that's what I wanted to try to portray, and I do that through, for me, with like light and airy uh, tones, and ooh, like on the edge of cool and warm tones, and I just try to illustrate that as if it's a morning, and you know, you're cozy in bed and reading a book because where else would you want to be, you know? <laughs> and you bring donuts into many of your pictures. That's one of the things I noticed right away is that your go-to prop is a colorful, wonderful donut. Sometimes the bite taken out of it, sometimes not. So I had this vision of you going to a corner bakery every morning and getting fresh donuts, but I think I might be wrong in that because I think that, <laughs> I, I think that you don't look like you're eating as many donuts every day as you're posting. <laughs> Well, I like that that's um, part of the idea, though, because visuals, imagery, like when you watch a film or you look at a great photo, it's about evoking a feeling. And that's what I'm trying to give people is, you know, it's a little snapshot of art. Um, it's something to hopefully make you pause in your day and escape a little bit. Do you have a and favorite I think that's part of Do you have a favorite um, variety? I, do. I like... Well, I mean, obviously, I don't have a favorite anything. I can't, you know, I'm just never been able to do that. But I have a few favorites. And I like just the glaze. I like chocolate. And um, I like the the powdered ones. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know what, what is the technical term. Like for cake donuts? Donut, 
Yes. Big donut. <laughs> yes. We have a duck donuts near our house. And when I lived in Tex Texas, duck donuts wasn't a thing, but on the East Coast it is. It's like this make your own donut place. They're all cake donut based, but you go there and you you fill out a menu, which here's your basic donut. Then you get to fill out your glaze and your toppings. And then you get this, you just watch them on this conveyor belt, create the donut that you came up with. And there's probably like hundreds of options, but it's a really well, dangerous fun. place to go into. So I try to, <laughs> but the, uh, we also have Dunkin' Donuts really near our, our house, which wasn't the case in Texas either. So I'm in, I'm in trouble if I, if I let myself mm -hmm. um, be like that. Um, now you, you, post about books that are across a lot of different genres and that's a little bit different than I see in a lot of bookstagrammers who are very hyper focused on a certain genre but I love that you read very widely so uh, what is the aim in that? Um, just to be myself and um, I'm not a person who just reads one or two genres I read a lot and I rather than limit myself um, I feel like I would be putting on airs if I was to say I only read mystery thrillers, which is something I read a lot of, or I used to anyway. But um, to do that forever, I would get exhausted, and it wouldn't really be true to who I am. And I think that's a big part of building a platform is that, yes, especially as an author, because you are coming at it from a business perspective, which you should, but it's about balancing who you are as a person, who, are, who you are as a brand, and um, having a system in place that you, you can go forward with your brand identity as yourself, as who you are, and allow yourself to grow within that, which I think is something a lot of people struggle with. They can pigeonhole themselves, um, uh, make too many rules for how they like have to be uh, instead of just being who they are, structured about who they are, but who they are. Now, I would imagine that now you're in a position where you are getting books from publicists and publishers because of how you've built your platform. But when you were getting started, and this was just a love of books and a love of wanting, a, you know, a place to want to talk about your love of books, um, how did you get started and when did that tide shift for you? I think it took probably about a year, maybe a little longer, maybe a year and a half of me just sharing books that I had purchased or got from the library or you know borrowed from a friend or family and slowly it started to happen where um i would reach out i think that's like don't wait for the world to come to you you know you've got to learn to pitch yourself um and you have to have content worthy of pitching which is another part of it you have to there has to be a benefit for a publisher to send you a book if you are a book blogger that you know they're not going to just send it to you because they can, you have to have an audience that you've built a relationship with authentically, that's who you are, you have to be consistent, um, and there's gotta be that benefit for them in order for them to send you and build that relationship. So I, I reached out and then slowly they started reaching out to me and I got on PR lists and it happened very, very slowly. So now I don't really buy books, I get some from the library, but almost everything I read is something that has been pitched to me or something that I saw that's coming out and I will pitch myself like, hey, I want to read this and <laughs> you know, I'll talk about it and uh, photograph it. And um, there's all sorts of intricacies that go into that. And that's the dream as a reader to have people just send you books that you get to talk about. But that is actually a reality and it's not that difficult to attain. I have that happening to me now too, not on quite as big a scale, but um, I am probably receiving more books than I'm buying. And uh, it's very exciting. It has certainly widened the scope of what I'm reading, but um, it, it is not as impossible. So, I mean, just so people can frame it, I have a little over 5,000 followers, so a fraction of what Bex is, but I still have people sending me books. So I think if you just dive in and you work on some basic principles, which, which Bex te teaches in her class, and you're consistent about that, you are going to create a platform uh, that they're looking for. And publicists are more and more looking for ways that they can reach readers directly because social media is such a great platform. I'm seeing too, in part because of uh, printing uh, arenas being a little down with our current COVID issue, but a lot of publicists too are sending out e-copies, um, uh, digital yes. copies to readers too. So that is even helping their budget. And I think that that is going to help them increase 
how many people they're even sending those ebooks to. So somebody getting started might also find that if they're willing to read an ebook, uh, they might find that they're receiving a little bit more and, and, and can start creating those relationships. So I know I'm receiving more of those right now too. Um, Bex, tell us a little bit more just about yourself though, so that we can get to know you. I know that you recently had a pretty big life change by going into homesteading. So what can we know to get to know you better before, uh, before people go and follow you? Yeah, sure. Well, my husband and I just purchased an 1870s farmhouse, which was a dream of ours for a long time. Um, not necessarily the farmhouse, but to have uh, a little bit of land that we could grow our own food, uh, try some animal husbandry and just explore ourselves. That's always been a part of who we are as a couple and something we haven't been able to really explore all the way. So we're really excited. Uh, it was, it happened after I thought it wasn't going to like once I reached the point where I kept thinking, well, maybe it's just never going to happen for us. That's when it happened. I think it was meant to be. And um, I'm just so excited. I feel more myself in the country. I'm a, I love nature and I'm a homebody. I'm like a good hobbit. You know, I like to be at home. <laughs> And uh, every now and then I'll have an adventure, but really I like to be home. So it's nice to have this to set up and we're going to record the whole journey because we're learning everything as we go. Um, I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm just excited about that. That's really great. And where can people find you for that when you start that platform? Um, it's pear and bramble, pear like the fruit and bramble like something you get stuck in in the woods. <laughs> so a little sweet, a little sour as like. Um, so it's Pear and Bramble Homestead, and there's a website, pearandbramble.com, and we have all of our socials saved as that name as well, but we're only sharing with email subscribers right now while we get content ready to go. It's sort of like our email community first, so there's an empty house tour. You can see the farmhouse, like, blank slate before we moved everything in and got started, so you just go to pearandbramble.com, and you can subscribe to the newsletter and I just send little letters. It's very community oriented. That's what I want it to be. It's feel like a little family. Well, I will definitely subscribe. I've been involved in real estate for about 20 years uh, on the investment and the realtor side at various times. So I love all of that. And I haven't renovated anything quite as old as 1870, but uh, that's that's a bit of a dream out there too. So I'm going to let you make those mistakes and I'll follow, follow you because I know you'll be authentic about it. I know you won't just make it all seem like it's easy as you go. So uh, I love that about you. Well, I think in real life, Bex, you and I would be good friends. We clearly have a penchant for long hair and yeah. I I think we both have that analytical creative side that we're trying to put together in order to promote the creative things in a way that takes uh, advantage of all of the wonderful platforms there are in which to do it. Uh, is there anything I didn't ask or anything that you want to make sure that watchers know about you? Uh, no, just I think you did everything super well. I am so glad to have been interviewed by you. It's really, really nice. I feel like I'm usually doing the interviewing, so it's an interesting. And I'm usually the interviewee. It's actually, I'm way more nervous being the interviewer because I feel like I want to make the person comfortable and I want to feel like I'm asking what I should and not asking what I shouldn't. Uh, so thank you for being among my early guinea pigs. I guess we're just trading off with, with that. Uh, but again, my, what I'm doing right yeah. here is I want to really illuminate that it takes so many different people and personalities and roles and platforms to put books out there in the world. I think sometimes it feels like an injustice that just the author's name is on the cover. Uh, I guess that's practical, but in reality, I just feel like there are so many people behind it, pre-production and post-production. You're one of those out there. Um, I think that you've taken pictures of most of my books over the years, and they consistently become my favorite ones. So thank you as an author for the artistry and beauty you put into that. But uh, tell us again where we can follow you, and let's and I will put them up also into this YouTube uh, description so that people can click on it and find you. Sure. So for my book blog, it's out of the box. Um, like out of the box, but my name out of the box. And uh, for anything, if you're an author or writer and you want just like quick, efficient training on Instagram and soon to be more, soon a branding course is coming out. I've got a whole bunch of stuff coming down the line. Or if you just want to take the free course for Instagram, it's authorinfluence.com. It's right there on the home page, easy to find. And then if you want to join us on this homesteading adventure, you are more than welcome to. It's Karen Bramble. And yeah, I hope to see you on one of those places, whatever fits your personality best.
definitely will do. And anybody watching here, if you'd like to see more interviews as they come, then make sure you're subscribing to my YouTube channel. And you can find me also on Instagram at Camille DeMaio underscore author. I love that we have these opportunities to connect like this. Feel free to ask questions. I'll be monitoring that. And if you have any questions uh, for Bex, you can reach out through me as well. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Camille.